It looks like 2019 will go down as the year of the 2A sanctuary. And honestly, we need this trend to continue well into the 2020 election year. So today, let's talk about a few things that can help make that a reality in your county. Now, according to what I can find through my research, there are currently 22 states that have some type of two-way sanctuary, be it on the city, county, or state level. Now, before we get started talking specifically about two-way counties, I think there are a couple of elephants in the room that we need to address. The first issue I think we need to address is the apathy and the laziness that appears to be going on within the firearm and the two-way community. While social media and email and those sorts of things are great tools in addition to a grassroots movement, by themselves, they are not enough. Now, if this means setting up a bunch of meetings ahead of time and taking a vacation day, then that's just what you're going to have to do. Second is going to be something that a lot of people are not too terribly comfortable with, and that's getting into a little bit of the political game. And no, I'm not talking about the national or even really the state level. What I'm talking about is getting into your local political game as far as electing good pro Second Amendment sheriffs. You need to help these good pro 2A sheriff's candidates put out signs, uh, work the polls, get signatures for petitions, and whatever else needs to be done. And third, it really does take a village. So get with like-minded patriots in your area and share the workload on these tasks to make change happen. Now with those things out of the way, let's talk about a few things to consider when you're trying to get your county to become a 2A sanctuary. Your county commissioners or supervisors are the legislative branch of your county. So you'll definitely need to reach out to those people and talk to them first. To help out you as well as those officials, if you go over to the Gun Owners of America website, you will find sort of a generic 2A sanctuary ordinance along with the petitions. Now, I do advise that each individual county put specific parameters into their particular resolution or declaration or whatever um, that cater to maybe specific needs within that particular area of the country. We're all going to be just a little bit different. So now that you know kind of what to do and who to talk to first, let's talk a little bit about what if your particular county officials are a little bit less than pro 2A. Now this still will require you to show up personally, set up meetings, and talk to those officials face to face. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do is go down to the local elections office and get the data from the last election cycle. In particular, you're going to want the voter turnout. Now, I think what you're going to find is that voter turnout is going to be extremely low. Now, that is obviously not a good thing, but voter turnout is actually a subject for a whole different video. Uh, in our context today, what we're looking at is those numbers. And if your voter turnout is low, that's actually a good thing for this particular movement and being able to push those uh, elected officials that might not be quite so pro 2A into actually voting to become a 2A sanctuary. So what you would do is you would take that voter turnout and let's say that that voter turnout was a thousand people. You would then take you a petition circulate that around, get that started. And what you would want to do is to shoot for about 500 or so signatures on that petition. What that's going to do is that's going to show that official that may be wishy-washy, that may be on the fence, that nearly half the people that voted him in last year want this to happen. And believe you me, politicians hate to lose the vote. And finally, you do want to get your local sheriff involved, but don't expect much from him in way of the legislative process. Remember that your local sheriff is in the executive branch, not the legislative branch. That said, your local sheriff tends to have a lot of influence and pull, so that can be of great benefit if you bring them into this movement very early on. So I've got some questions before we leave for the day. The first is going to be, do you live in a 2A sanctuary? If not, are you working towards that end? If you do not live in a 2A sanctuary and you're 
not working toward trying to make it to a sanctuary, why not? Hit me up in those comments below. With a little bit of local organization and a little bit of boots on the ground effort, we can make 2020 the best year yet for the rise of the 2A Sanctuary. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Until next time, don't forget to chain fire freedom.